Hey everyone, welcome back! Hey look, it's the Titania video I was trying to make a month ago. Honestly, Lua's Prey, holidays, and a bunch of other things and travels were the cause of the delay. But she's finally here now. This is a Titania-based DPS build. What do I mean by that? I mean that the damage comes from Titania's own abilities herself. It's not a Thermal Sunder Nuke, it's not a Dex Pixia spam build. This is a build that uses all parts of her kit. It is also super ADHD, so keep that in mind. Today's build reaches between 110 to 120 KPM and is meant for Steel Path Survival. Today we're making use of Dexpixia, obviously, but also Diwata, her Exalted Melee, and also her Razor Flies. All three of these weapons come together to achieve the performance shown here. Your Razor Flies kill everything except Acolytes. Your Dexpixia kills everything even faster and treads over guard instantly, but is the slowest of the three against Acolytes. Your Diwata destroys everything and is the fastest way to kill Acolytes but also takes time to single out Exmi units when removing Overguard. Titania's biggest problem is that fundamentally, she has no way to do AoE DPS. This is why most people don't use her on Steel Path. She's most well known for Thermal Sunder spam and fissures and even though she can kill on Steel Path, shooting single targets with punch thrown crowds can be painful. Her Arch Melee Diwana is actually considered a normal melee, but it uses Arch Melee logic. What does this mean? It doesn't have a heavy attack. Literally. Using heavy attack uses the normal melee animation, does not benefit from heavy attack related mods, cannot activate heavy attack related mods, and doesn't use the combo multiplier either. But because it's a normal melee, this means it does actually have better AoE capability than her pistols. Perhaps the biggest AoE option for her, or at least pseudo though, are her Razor Flies. Most people don't really pay attention to these, as they're just one aspect of her Razor Ring. They don't usually do that much damage, but they do have a couple of very interesting properties. They have 0% status chance and naturally pure IPS with 80% slash weight, so suck against armor. But they are technically pseudo exalts because they take mods from your Diwana to scale their damage. They take all crit mods, elementals, IPS mods, and base damage mods as well as attack speed, but they do not take conditional mods. Ignore all arcane buffs and mod set bonuses, so gladiator crit buffs don't work, arcane fury does not work, etc. The exception though is condition overload. For some reason, they do get full scaling. We can't see the damage numbers since they are considered allies, but it is very obvious. Priming is pretty important to maximizing Razorfly damage, however Trash Fodder doesn't really need priming when full stripped for them to kill. Also, because we're full stripping enemies today, we're gonna be building viral anyways for bonus damage against flesh, procs boosting damage, including razor flies, yada yada. Full strip also works because Diwano is a pseudo exalt, meaning it cannot use acolyte mods, namely Blood Rush, and has to outsource all its crit scaling from your melee stats that gladiator mods. In theory, you can also use the melee guidance trick to retain gladiator stacks while in Razor Wing, but I really didn't find this necessary, especially because of how easy it is to go in and out of Razor Wing, barely losing damage, unlike Baruch losing all of his red crits. Let's take a look at that Titania build. You'll notice she's all strength and even negative efficiency. The first thing I'll tell you today is that her energy economy is actually unsustainable. So how do we keep it up? It's her one augment. If you don't actively keep an eye on her energy bar and use her one to cast on enemies, you will run out of energy. And this entire build falls apart when you can't cast and can't go into Razor Wing. Yes, we still have our trusty Zar, but that's meant to be our backup. The Axelus slot is whatever, but if you feel like you forget to keep Spellbind up at all times for status immunity, you could slot Prime Sure Footed here. But I'm lazy to Forma, and this is already enough to showcase the setup fine. We need neutral range so that Tribute is actually castable at further than in your face range. Tribute is actually optional, but what does it bring to this build? Each unique Tribute casted creates a shadow above the enemy. Grabbing the shadow grants you one bonus razor fly when in razor wing. A razor wing naturally spawns with six flies, meaning tribute lets you go up to ten. The tribute flies always last 120 seconds, provided they don't die, and that's the caveat. As you bring this into higher levels, such as endurance, they will start dying very, very quickly despite their small hitbox and evasion stats. The extra four flies can only be reobtained by recasting each unique tribute buff, but the base six flies can be recasted by just going in and out of razor wing. They also scale with strength, which is perfect on this build, because we need 400 to full stripped in one cast with pillage. 
This is achieved with Molt Augmented, granting 60% at 250 stacks and a Matterai Sling Strength plus 40% buff. It sits us at 422, which not only full strips, but also buffs Razor Flies, Dewata, and Dex Pixia. How much does it actually add to our KPM? Well, if you touch absolutely nothing, Razor Flies get about 90 KPM, but once you add in your Diwata and Dexpixia, they only contribute for about 50 to 60 out of your total of 110 to 120. Krosa Projection here is listed as a flex slot because it cuts the defense strip of Pillage down to just 328. This means we already reach it without a Molt Augmented. You are free to drop Augmented or the Aura for something else such as Arcane Velocity for our pistols. Natural Talent and Matterized Power Transfer casting speed buffs grants us plus 100%, making it much comfier to cast Tribute, Spellbind, and Pillage. Also, pro tip, casting Razor Ring while in the air skips the animation. Augur Secrets is here as the lone Augur mod so that we regain shields even on initial Pillage casts for a tiny bit of extra shield gate if ours breaks early. Otherwise, the 128 duration and 100 of range lets Pillage hit out to 59 meters, but do keep in mind it has a line of sight check. To make Spellbound Harvest more consistent on tagging enough enemies and regenerate 200-ish energy per cast, we also bring along Megas Anomaly on our Operator, as an update earlier this year finally lets you go Operator while being in Razor Wing. Nice. I did bring a generic toxin Kuvazarn to deal with violence if she silences you, but that's literally its only purpose. We don't need it to kill the other Acolytes, or X my units. Ampitav is an Augur stats thick here and also a primer for when you come out of your 4. If there are particularly tanky units, you uncast 4, spam Ampitav, go back into your 4, pillage is needed. This will refresh your base 6 Razor Flies, which will now rip the enemies apart because they have Condition Overload scaling. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. For your melee, its only purpose is to carry gladiator mods. You can bring whatever you want, although I chose a Exodia Contagion Saw for if I run out of energy. A full stat stick would be using all three gladiator mods instead. You can also use the melee guidance trick I showcased in my 2023 Baruku video. If you want free 11 times gladiator stacks forever, but I'll have to direct you to the video at the top right if you want to see how that works. Dexpixia is built pure viral with banes for 1.55 times more damage. Horn and Strike is our flex slot because it's multiplicative to strength. Gavana shot for the extra status to proc viral sooner as well as more base damage. Gavana is multi shot, fire rate, and a lethal torrent. Nothing else is really needed. In theory, you could drop Gunslinger, which I'm using because I have the wrong Polaris for anemic agility, but you can drop it for Seeker for punch through since her pistols are traditionally single target. For Arch Melee, on the other hand, Diwata uses normal melee mods. Keep in mind that this is not a min max DPS Diwata. This is a min max Razor Fly stat stick that also happens to work pretty well as a DPS melee. We have Pure Viral, which is passed on to the flies, attack speed, which significantly buffs both Diwata and the flies, Banes, which ironically do affect the flies, unlike most pseudo exalted and our typical crit stick mods, Sacrificial Steel, because we can't even run Blood Rush on exalteds, and Condition Overload, because it's the strongest mod for the flies, but also a fat a damage buff for Diwata itself. Our pet today is Panzer, which cannot die while you're in Razor Wing because it despawns. Their Viral Quills and Martyr will not work either, meaning if you zero out HP, you will down and your pet cannot save you unless you were not in Razor Wing. Devolution won't kick in because your pet is already invincible with the Grey Bar to start with, however, the Synth Set bonus and effects do work. If you're going to bring Equilibrium, Synth Set will still let you pick up Health Orbs at full HP even if you can't despawn. Prime Raider also still works and Titania has her own built-in vacuum already. As I mentioned earlier, but I'm gonna say it again here, your Operator's loadout does matter for this build today. Megas Elevator Repair is nice in a pinch to heal, but Megas Anomaly lets you consistently group enemies as needed when you want to cast Spellbound Harvest to restore 200 energy. It is strongly recommended and also makes grouping for Razor Flies and weapons to kill much easier. That's pretty much it. DPS Rotation? <laughs> you really think there is one? That's hilarious. You run around, cast pillage, shoot stuff, melee stuff, cast pillage again, shoot stuff, melee stuff. Set up your tribute buffs if you want 10, razor flies instead of 6. Acolyte spawned, shoot its shield off, cast pillage to strip armor, and melee it to death in 2-3 to three seconds. All razor wings dead, just recast razor wing for another 6. That's it. There is no clear way on how to use a rotation on this build. You're just a passing a maelstrom. Spamming a combination of ability casts, melees, shooting, and your loyal razor flies ripping everything apart. Cheers! 
If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible. Like I've done with covering the Lewis Prey updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. Don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? And that'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.